physical researcher, magician, and paperback salesman Harry Price left his library of magical literature to the University of London on his death in 1948. The library includes some of the oldest books on magic, both of the paranormal and legitimate variety. The collection also contains Price's own publications, detailing his research into a number of the famous mediums and paranormal phenomena of the times. Harry Price was quick to describe rare and unusual books in his library. As far as I know, he did not write about Will Goldstone's more exclusive magical secrets. For Price, it would have lacked the glamour of the pre-20th century books in his library. It was less scarce for one thing, besides which the writer was Harry Price's friend. But his copy is worth celebrating. It is the first in the numbered series, and it contains a handwritten dedication on its title page. Congratulations to friend Harry Price. You possess the first copy many hours before other subscribers receive their copies. Best wishes. Sincerely yours, Will Goldstone, November 1921. More Exclusive Magical Secrets is the second in a series of three which began with Exclusive Magical Secrets and ended with Further Exclusive Magical Secrets. All three were issued with a substantial praise lock to emphasize secrecy. The volume contains sections on pocket tricks, small apparatus tricks, platform and stage tricks, Chinese tricks, and automata, and ventriloquial devices. Perhaps the most interesting section in relation to Harry Price's interests is that dealing with anti-spiritualist tricks. include the floating skull as well as a new spirit slate or a spirit trapping table. Shown here is one of Senate House Library's two copies of the 1494 edition of the Malleus Maleficarum. Price, the physical researcher and writer who owned this volume, hated its contents, describing the book as one of the most terrible books known to students of the occult.
its author, Heinrich Institoris, was an inquisitor and a dubious figure in and out of trouble, who wanted to prove that witches and witchcraft were a real, not an imaginary, danger and to facilitate their persecution. He wrote his book quite quickly in 1486 and divided it into three parts. Part 1 was addressed to fellow theologians and comprised an essay in demonology. Part 2 aimed at preachers reinforced part one's message of witchcraft being a reality and all witches being satanic devotees and supplied anecdotes for sermons. In part three, Institoris armed ecclesiastic and secular judges with technical points on arresting, examining and sentencing witches. I hereby sentence Mary Ipswich to also be held in the stocks. <laughs> the work was printed eight times between 1486 and 1496 and on another 16 occasions between 1511 and 1621. Price's distaste did not prevent him from acquiring first editions printed between 1494 and 1615, in addition to the first English translation made by Montague Summers in 1928. The edition selected as a library treasure is Price's earliest, printed by Anton Koberger owner of Southern Germany's largest printing and publishing house in Nuremberg on 17th of March 1494. While smaller than the other examples of Koberger's output in Senate House Library, it is a fitting title to feature in the year marking the 500th anniversary of Koberger's death. I'm Peter. Where are you from, originally? 